Hello there folks, today we're taking a look at the game called Barony. It's published by Matagot and the designer is Marc André. So, two to four barons are fighting for power. They try to expand territories, build cities, villages, fortresses in order to become the next king. Let my servant show you the game. The game of Barony is extremely simple. It has few restrictions though, but let's focus on this board right here first. So this is the scoring track. Now you move on, the, on this scoring track based on few actions that you will do during your turn. Now whoever gets to the last space, to the 80 points, to the Duke, the game will then end and you will score points. You will score points based on the positions uh, you are in and also based on the tokens that you have here, that you have gathered during your turn and if you haven't spent them on the actions as well. So, this basically means that whoever will have the most points will be the winner of the game. Now, how the game is played. You have different terrains here. This is the randomly chosen map. I mean, like, you basically put these triangles together, which is really cool. Randomizer here. Now, each player will also have his city, his village. Uh, there is also a stronghold. And there is also a knight, and there are quite a few pieces of them, but there are in a limited quantity. Now, at the beginning of the game, each player will already have his city, three of his cities and three of his knights out there. And this is the board where are all of the different actions depicted that you can do during your turn. Now, on your turn, you can do one action, and you choose one action out of all of these six actions, with the restrictions, of course. Now, the very first action that you can do, you can recruit new knights to the board. So, you can recruit either two new knights to the city or three knights if you, the city is near the lake. So, for example, right here, I can recruit three new knights right there. Let's say like that. Yeah? I'm going to put them down right for now. Now, the second action you can choose is that you can move your knights. Uh, you move each one of your knights, you basically move two knights, you move each one of them independently. So you cannot move one knight two spaces, you have to move um, two knights uh, onto different, one space each basically. So maybe I move one here and one here. Of course, I cannot go on the lake. You cannot basically build anything on the lake and you cannot go on the lake. The lake is only boosting the recruitment action. So um, there is also different restrictions of where you can go. You cannot go somewhere, for example, I cannot go here because there is an enemy city and he has majority here. So if I'll go here, I'll be automatically killed because he has majority here, which means that I just cannot go there because this will be a suicide. Now, my opponent can come here because two pawns, two different pawns can coexist as long as there is no majority between them. So that kind of thing. If also somebody is, the opponent is on a mountain, you cannot go on a mountain. Only one player can be on a mountain at a time. Now there are so there are many, many different restrictions that you do or not. You can also kill others. For example, that situation right here, I can come with my new knight here it will be majority for now, so I have two, my opponent has one, and it will kill his knight. So that these different situations. But there are many, many restrictions, you can read them in the rulebook. Now, um, here as well, which what you also can do, you can construct. You can construct either a village or a stronghold. So, and that's where your knights come in hand. So, what you can do, let's say this is the situation, you can convert all your knights into the village or a stronghold. Now, the thing is that you cannot construct somewhere where there's someone else, because he's on the way, in the way. Now, uh, strongholds work like that, so basically they block the space. Nobody can go there. That's, that's really easy. The villages are the ones that you construct in order to get these tokens right here. And these tokens will give you points during the game which you can spend in order to move on the Duke's track or will give you points at the end of the game if you will not use them. It's this white symbol right here. And you will get 
These tokens based on uh, where you have exchanged your knight to village or a stronghold. So a mountain, this is uh, the plains or something like that. Now these are the fields and such. So now I can change this one into this one, here into this one and so on. Maybe I'll put the um, stronghold right here so I can block the space for the others. Now it doesn't matter how many knights you will uh, basically take off and put the villages on top but it does matter that if somebody else already like there can be only one building at a time so let's say I had two knights right here I cannot build two villages here I can, I can only exchange one knight into the village and the other knight will stay right here and then I will get these tokens it's cool now by the way if somebody basically kills your village. Let's say there was a situation like that where he came here, or maybe on the next turn he got another knight and he came here with another knight. So which means that now he has majority here, the yellow. So which means that the red's village is destroyed and the yellow player can choose one token from that player to, to basically steal. Which is a really cool mechanic here, which I like. Now, the fourth action you can do, you can exchange the village into the city. And there are also quite a few restrictions. You can never build cities onto forests. And two cities cannot be next to each other and such. So, for example, I cannot build here, but maybe I had a village here. I can build here. Basically exchange it to the city. I will not get anything else, but I will move on the track. As you can see, the track can go... Let's, sorry, the track can go that way or downstairs. Now, when I build and say I'm yellow, I built a city, I'm going to go up. I build another city and basically, because you have three of your cities already out and you have only two cities in reserve, so you can only build two cities most during the game. So you will go 10 points further into the track right here. That's why I built cities. The fifth action you can do is maybe you're cornered in the game and basically you had really bad start. You want to start from somewhere else on the board. You can take two knights from your reserve, discard one from the game and take the other one and come in from any corner of the map right here or any side of the map. Maybe I'll come from here now and so on. So this is really simple action. And the sixth action I can do Whenever I have gathered quite a few of these tokens by building villages or strongholds and such, I can exchange them to go up in this noble track right here. So, and I go up 15 points. For that, I need to spend 15 points. This yellow will not score me any points uh, in the, at the end of the game anyway. So only these numbers which are white will score me, so if there are left, but right now I can maybe spend these, 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 how much I have right now, let's say I have 16, so I, I, basically you have to spend at least 15, so if you spend more than 15, it's just lost. So I'll spend that and then move on the track, and that way the track moves 15 points each. So that's how you can get to the 80 points to the Duke. And that's the whole game. Each player will do one action, then the next player's turn, the next player's turn. It's a little bit like chess-like and you want to get really fast to the highest position right here so you can end the game and you want to have some extra tokens. So Because maybe somebody will be at the position of 70, but he can still win if you're, you are at 80, he's at 70, but he can still win if he has a lot of these tokens and he will get these extra points from those tokens that he has left from the game. So that's basically it. So there is also an expansion which is called Sorcery and this expansion adds some magical, as you can just show you the rulebook, it adds some magical places there where you can get the magical tokens and then spend the tokens to, to basically do the better versions of the actions that are already available, which is really really cool. We haven't tried the expansion yet so I cannot talk about it right now, but this is the game and this is how it's played. I really like all kind of wooden custom meeples and such in different games. So here you have wooden cities, knights, villages, strongholds. 
it's really cool on the boards so of different colors and such. So the, the art itself is, is fine. Um, the theme is medieval, so it's kind of boring for me. So the art is also medieval art and such. So, But on the other hand, the art is really cool. The artist is the same who made Archipelago. And Archipelago is one of the most gorgeous games out there. So, But still, the theme doesn't help me much. You know. Yeah, but on the other hand, this is mostly abstract game. Uh, you don't really need like super special theme for that. Okay. Uh, what really stands out in this game is quick turns. Um, you have you on your turn you do only one thing and you choose out of six. Mm -hmm. The choice is big, but usually you always know what you need to do, or the choice is just easy to to choose. So choices go like super quickly all the time. Yeah, I, I like really this. appreciate it in the games. Um, there is on the other hand, there's one thing that I'm not completely sure about. So the game has lots of limitations, like terrain limitations. Mm -hmm. Is that you can't build uh, your uh, city in forest, or uh, you yeah. can't on on rocks. You can't put two pieces and and things like that. Mm -hmm. They will slip your mind throughout the game, which is not cool. But on the other hand, I don't. I don't think that the, that the game should lift the limitations because this is kind of all about it. So um, There's the expansion yeah. which probably uh, breaks those rules, like breaks those yeah. limitations, which uh, as far as... We haven't played the expansion yet, but uh, as far as I read about it, it should be like that. Let's and say I, th I think limitations are good, but it creates a little bit... I like the limitations here. Uh, yeah. I think limitations is one of the aspects which quickens the game because you sometimes, if you have so many overwhelming options, then you will be AP prone. So here I think the limitations help you think, think quicker mm -hmm. and understand your turn. So that's at least my idea. But uh, the other thing which I like about the game, I do like limitations as well, is um, how you can block each other. Uh, I don't know, so let's say strategically. And then it's not a conflict type blocking. Mm -hmm. where you basically cut someone off and he's done. Uh, it's just uh, kind of a smaller blocking aspect where you block uh, one, maybe a mountain, or, or you block maybe a small terrain. Yeah, it's like you can create... It's the, hard to understand. Yeah, it's, you can create really situation where you, you get area that. harder to access, basically. Yeah. You don't completely cut off, but you made it harder. I don't know why it was just really hard to for me to explain mm -hmm. that, but basically I like how you can block each other. Yeah. Uh, so this game has battles where you can kill or smash opponent's village or kill knight, but none of these feel badly destructive. So it's not mm -hmm. like you will start from zero or you're pushed back hard. No, it's like small ones, like, like I don't know, skirmishes or something. There is some stealing though, uh, when you yeah, basically the destroy ones. the village. You steal points from him, but yeah, it doesn't really feel, it doesn't occur much, at least in our game it didn't occur much, because uh, you need to expand yourself and just stealing points and like basically, mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't just really help ways. you that much, yeah. yeah. So as the other things. So I feel that the game is chess-like in, um, in a sense that you can create yes. situations where you block someone or, or you create situations where where opponent gets in a like bad situation, you, you can block yourself. Mm -hmm. Or like there, it creates a lot of that, you know, with extra abstract pieces and, and maybe even like the limitations how you can move or where you can build mm -hmm. something. So it has that. I, it's hard to explain, but it really yeah. has that feeling. This, this game is hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I have played chess a lot, uh, and what I can say is basically in the chess you have the same kind of like basically limitations as well, yeah. This piece moves in this pattern, the other piece moves in the other pattern, and you have these big limitations here as well. All, all the different pieces act differently. They have different lim placement limitations, building limitations and such, so moving in them. So I can see where it feels like chess, and the turns are rather quick, and all you do, you're expanding, like in the chess, so... Or go. Or, or go, yes. Um, go. What I also like here, which is like in the chess. Chess is a strategy game though. Um, here you have the strategy and tactics. At some point you will still, you want to expand and you expand, you have a strategy it's that at some point you will build up different villages and such so, and then you will build a city right there. But at some moments you need to act quickly and you need to adapt to your opponents because mm -hmm. if opponent starts moving towards 
your direction where you want to build up. All right, now I need to block my opponent somehow. Now I need to spawn extra knights in this city, move them quick, build a stronghold, whatever. So you need to adapt to the situation. So it's 50% tactical, 50% strategic for me. So at least what I realized in this game. So we've compared a few times uh, Barony with chess, but um, the very important thing is that you don't think a lot in the game. So we have a player who is like super AP prom. He thinks in every single game. So yes. long. But even in this one, he deterns actually really quickly because there is nothing to like really count. Maybe last one or two turns, mm. but s still yeah. it's, mm. I would even say it's anti AP prom game. I guess that so. though near the end he started thinking very very much and uh, like rather but long. But it still doesn't. Mm. But near the end, I mean, yeah. It doesn't yeah. take um, I think it it might be or might not be true. It might be better with more players. So we have tried it with two. We need to try it with different player counts even more in order to see the different aspects of different player counts. But I think you I would like. Haven't tried it only with two. No, no, I mean, not only with two, yes, we have tried with more, but I mean, like, I'm not sure which is the best, yet I feel like I would rather go towards more, more player, yeah. more players. Because the turns are quick, it doesn't really matter how many players there are, uh, because it still will be a quick game, and on the other hand, um, there will be more of that blocking and competitive play and such. So, so more players, the board becomes messy. Uh, less players, you can create really like sections. So this is my section. This is your section. So and we can c cut out each other and just play yep. our own game. Yeah. Yep. Which I personally don't like that much. But mm -hmm. I think the more player you get, the less sections you have. But I think three might be sweet spot. Four. Yeah. But I don't imagine yeah. playing. But overall, when we saw this game in Essen, this when I saw this game in Essen, I wasn't really interested in it because of the. And in medieval theme and such, and when I looked at the board, I was like, mm, it feels like maybe something expanding territory. I'm not really an area yeah. control person, and it feels abstract and whatever, you know. But we finally got this game because of the matter got, uh, and because we trust them, really trust them, and we joined it. Yeah. Uh, at least I, I like this game much more than I expected. So this is for me a hidden gem, yes. which went under the radar. Uh, really, really fast when it came out, just went under the radar. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't know how many players are now are playing this game nowadays, but because it came out in nowadays, nowadays. it came out in 2014 or 2015, no, no, no. something 15, like that. 16, 15, probably. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, so I really like Barony as well. Um, I didn't expect to like it as much, and what I really like is that it's quick. It's accessible, it's easy to put on table in between games. So it's not filler, it's it's kind of full turn game, but it doesn't feel like that. So I, it doesn't make your brain hurt. So it's more like fun, you know, putting, because you put stuff on the table so yeah. quickly, it's, perhaps it just feels lighter than it is. Yet it feels like a full ride. Yes. I mean, that that's what I like about this one. So should yeah. we go to our dice ratings? Sure. I give this game seven and a half dice out of ten. And I give this game eight dice out of ten.